everybody, I'm JJ Behrens and this is Yarek Vikevich and in the Google Hangout is Jeffrey Posnick and we're here to have our next episode of YouTube Developers Live. How are you guys doing? Doing good? How are you? Awesome. So Yarek, I, will, I was watching the videos of our talks at Google I.O. and I noticed that during the gaming talk um, you were actually responding to email while there was someone else speaking. I mean, I've joked about your connectivity before, but that's pretty incredible. Uh, yes, I think I, I'm working on my email addiction. Uh, I think I have made some progress on my vacation, as we discussed yeah. uh, last time. I was off the grid for about five days. Did it hurt? Uh, I had severe headaches and withdrawal symptoms, uh, so my effort has failed. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to improve. Um, for that particular session, which we'll cover in more detail later on today, uh, we were actually uh, working through and uh, uploading demos, uh, and I was checking to see if actually the demo has uploaded. Uh, so it wasn't email per se, I was, I was checking the YouTube app. Okay. No, 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 that's to be expected. That's just who you are. I mean, I've mentioned this multiple times. So another surprise, secret, hidden guest that we have today is Amanda Surya, our boss. And um, hey, Amanda. last week we had a meeting with all the people in Google Developers Live, and we decided that the shows would be a lot more interesting if uh, for every show, the boss of the people involved in the show would come and make faces, you know, just to liven up the atmosphere. So, you know, if I start laughing, um, yeah, that's why. We have live audience online and offline. It's, yeah, just kind of strange. No pressure, JJ. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. So today we're going to do an I.O. recap. So we'll talk about all the things we talked about at I.O., which you could watch um, after the show, not before we finish. And uh, we're also going to take office hours questions, and Jeffrey will answer those before you even ask them. You know, that's what he's good at. Um, so, uh, Yarek, what was the first talk you want to talk about? So, we thought about uh, a good sequence to cover, and uh, the first one uh, we wanted to cover is one that recently uh, blog we blogged about, about getting direct feedback from your community. Uh, so, this is a talk that uh, Jeff and Eric uh, Lundberg uh, did at Google I.O. So, I was thinking that perhaps Jeff could talk about it in more detail since he's the subject domain expert and he's really big on getting feedback from various communities. I wanted to just do a brief recap. You know, the videos are online for all these talks, as I said, so as Yarek said, so I don't want to, you know, re give my Google I.O. presentation. I don't think I have it memorized by any means, so I wouldn't be able to if I wanted to. But um, from a very high level, uh, this Google I.O. talk was basically announcing two things. And uh, we actually announced two things that weren't quite ready for people to use yet at Google I.O., but in the weeks since then, we've made them publicly available. So as of right now, folks can go out and try both these things that I'm talking about, which is great. Uh, so two kind of aspects of the announcement. The first was what we're calling our I guess it's the YouTube Embeddable Upload Widget. It's had a couple of different internal names. I think that's the one we've kind of settled on, though. And um, you can think of this as something that's very similar to the YouTube Embedded Player, but instead of allowing you to embed YouTube playback on your site, you can embed a way of capturing YouTube video from um, any, random, any user's webcam. And that video then gets uploaded into that user's web uh, YouTube account. Uh, obviously, this is done, you know, first asking the user. There's, you know, consent that needs to be done. You have to click some buttons before webcam recording starts, and your user needs to be logged into their own YouTube account. So these videos all go into, you know, the specific end user accounts. They don't go into like one master YouTube account, and that's very much in keeping with our recommended best practices. And uh, this is something we've been hearing about, I don't know, um, I think the original feature request for this is probably about four years old. Um, so we've offered this type of upload from uh, directly with on, within YouTube.com. So there's been a page that you can go to for a while and record new videos using your webcam. But 
you know, there's all sorts of different types of integration that make use of being able to put this on your own page and to solicit feedback from people who are viewing your page, members of your site's community. Uh, so we're really excited about the potential ways of uh, using this. And in addition to just kind of the simple way of dropping in an iframe on the page that has the widget, uh, we also have a nice JavaScript API, which is very similar, again, to our YouTube player JavaScript API. And this lets you do things like keep track of when the video has been uploaded and get back the video ID, um, which is useful if you ever want to you know, curate the videos that have been submitted. Um, that's, that's kind of the main integration point. There are a few other methods which we have documented. You know, Jeffrey, I love this feature, and I'm really, mm -hmm. really happy that we implemented this. You know, I was really looking forward to it for a long time. And I know that, you know, you see YouTube embeds all across the Internet, and we have an API for embedding this on your own website. Do you think we'll start seeing this widget popping up in various sites like blogs and so forth so you <laughs> could upload video comments all across the web? I'm certainly hoping so. Um, you know, video commenting is one of the areas that we have uh, kind of envisioned as being perfect for this. And during our Google I.O. talk, we showed off a demo of a uh, very initial integration with a company called FormSpring, which is kind of like a questions and answer um, website. And, uh, you know, they hacked something together for us, and we're grateful that they're able to do that. And it shows how you can post a question and allow people to post video responses answering your question, which is just you know a whole new level of interactivity, which is great. So they're making good use of the API, and I, I think you'll be able to see that on their live website um, hopefully before too long. They haven't fully rolled it out yet. That's pretty awesome. And you so, integrated this into YouTube Direct? Yeah. So the other aspect of the talk um, is something that we announced called YouTube Direct Lite. And I think I've talked about YouTube Direct at pretty much every opportunity I've had in the past. And uh, for those who are not familiar with it, it's it's a platform that's been around for a while that allows you to embed a submission widget on a web page. And the, up until now, you could submit videos either via you know something stored locally on your hard drive, or if you already had a video in your YouTube account, you could say, OK, <coughs> I want this video to be considered a submission for this particular use case. Um, one of the common use cases that we've seen in the past are news organizations, for instance. Like a news organization might say, hey, submit some videos related to you know, this tornado that we just had in this area. And folks could kind of do um, user-generated content and make folks aware of that. So that's been around for a while. Uh, it's the existing YouTube Direct platform was written on Java App Engine, kind of required a little bit of expertise in order to set up and deploy properly. And we've been hearing for a long time that folks want something that's easier to deploy and a lot lighter weight. And uh, that's what YouTube Direct Lite is. So we were happy to announce that as well. Uh, you can start using it today if you'd like. And the basic use case is as simple as dropping an iframe onto any existing web page, and that will let you solicit videos uh, via a number of different mechanisms. And one of those mechanisms is that webcam upload widget. So uh, this kind of takes care of the whole curation and moderation use case, um, which the webcam widget itself doesn't really provide any um, any method to do. Like, you know, the, the YouTube upload webcam widget is great for soliciting videos, but once they've been solicited, there's no interface built in for moderating those submissions or keep showing what's been submitted. So YouTube Direct Lite kind of fills that void. Um, it lets you approve any videos that have been submitted. And once they get approved, they get added to a playlist uh, that is hosted in your own account. So it's very easy to feature any submissions after they've been approved and say, hey, you know, these are the great videos that, um, that I've had a chance to review and I want to share with the rest of the world. So. We're looking forward to folks using that. And That's yeah, full, inf full information is available on a, a recent blog post on apiblog.youtube.com. Yeah. yeah, I imagine adoption is going to be pretty good considering the first step is no longer <laughs> install Eclipse. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Not having to provide support for people um, who are not familiar, who are not programmers, and I don't, I personally don't know. <laughs> my way through every single aspect of Eclipse and asking somebody who's not a developer to do that uh, is, it's a pretty big burden. So 
I'm, I'm really happy that we could provide something that's easier to use. That's pretty cool. So the webcam widget was definitely a big announcement at Google I.O., but we also announced another thing in our next talk, which is called uh, new YouTube Android player tools. What was that? The secret thing yes. that we were trying to keep secret from everyone. Yes, so I'm going to have to correct you because we have pre-announced it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, and uh, that was a session uh, by Ross and Anton uh, from our mobile engineering team. Uh, one of the uh, frequent topics uh, that we discussed previously uh, during our Hangouts was uh, the process of embedding YouTube videos into mobile applications. And whenever a question came up about it, I would typically wave my hands a lot. Uh, I'd seem quite uncomfortable. <laughs> I would sweat a little bit. And then, <laughs> then I would try to address it. Uh, so with this new um, API that we will be launching, uh, these questions will become a lot easier to answer. Uh, so the fundamental problem we're solving is you know, how do we reliably embed YouTube content into uh, native uh, applications on Android. So if you're an Android developer, build an Android application, and you would like to incorporate video playback, uh, but you do not want to have what's called an out-of-body experience where you know you launch a YouTube app, or you don't want to have to uh, struggle with uh, web views and various limitations of web views, you can actually use an API that we will be launching, which allows you to easily incorporate video playback into your application and have fair amount of control over that playback. Uh, so Anton and Ross go into detail in the session about you know, what are the mechanics of incorporating uh, the API. And we also had a few very interesting demos from our early adopters. Uh, there is a company uh, called Glodo that uh, presented last week at this Hangout. Uh, so they really target the advertising space. And uh, they were showing how they can incorporate video playback into their uh, app that can be generated for specific uh, marketing campaigns. Uh, we had a motor trend, which was a Google TV application, something that I haven't explicitly mentioned. But if you're a Google TV developer, and again, you want to incorporate video playback in your Google TV app, the same API uh, addresses that uh, problem as well. So now you can actually build you know, second screen experiences or beautiful full screen experiences with YouTube video playback around your content um, on Google TV. Uh, so Motor Trend did a very nice demo. And then another company, um, and uh, I don't want to kind of blow the surprise, uh, but uh, let me just tell you that this is really an amazing demo. Uh, not so much uh, the application, which is very beautiful, but what they were able to perform on stage uh, during the event. Oh, yes. Uh, so I think we came very close to uh, really upending the um, uh, keynote demo. Uh, I think it was quite, uh, I, you know, maybe opinions might it's be hard to <laughs> It's hard to compete with guys jumping out of uh, blimps. True, but I think uh, the co-founder of, of uh, Skimble did, did pretty good. So I, I really encourage you to watch this uh, session video. Uh, the slide deck is linked in the video description. And then, as I mentioned, it's uh, pre-announced, so we haven't launched it yet. Uh, we are, however, acti actively seeking trusted testers. Uh, so if you're building an interesting application, uh, reach out to us on G+, and, and we'll see if we can uh, hook you up and uh, get some feedback uh, from you just to make sure that we really cover all the various use cases before uh, we launch the API. So the session was a lot of fun, and uh, really encourage you to watch it. Yeah. You know, I wasn't an Android developer <coughs> until we came out with this API, and I had to learn Android as quick as, as quickly as I could. But the thing that amazed me the most is when I built an app using this API, I could show a video and some, you know, some stuff to the right of the video and then play the video and then have it go full screen and bounce back without, you know, without stopping playing, without rebuffering, just the smoothness of like moving things around. It's like, that's pretty new. I mean, we couldn't do that before. Yes, and another interesting <coughs> feature, and we hear that a lot from uh, content partners that work uh, with us, is uh, the API actually has monetization capability. So if you are, have content that uh, is monetized on YouTube and you build, say, a fan app or any type of app around that content, uh, the ads will show and you will be getting revenue uh, from that content. So this is something that uh, you know a lot of content owners are uh, experiencing rapid growth in mobile, and this is something we, we covered at the session as well. Uh, and uh, in order to both enjoy the, the, the ride and get paid, uh, this is a, a great solution to that uh, by incorporating video playback using that API. The monetization capability remains as is. 
I, I love the way that you always bring it down to the bottom line of helping our viewers increase their bottom line. Show me the money. Show me the money. <laughs> <laughs> so the next talk uh, that we had at, at I.O. was uh, HTML5 at YouTube, Stories from the Frontline by Greg uh, Schechter. And um, that was a fun talk. Um, uh, represent some of the content of the talk. I was not one of the presenters. So it was uh, Greg Schechter and, and Zoltan um, from our players engineering team. But I did attend as an audience member. So I could do what I can. But I, I would encourage everybody also just to watch the, the video for you know, um, a more authoritative account of what happened. But yeah, Greg and, and Zoltan were just talking about um, some of the really interesting types of integrations that YouTube is doing using various things that kind of fall into the HTML5 umbrella. Um, the obvious thing being HTML5 video playback, but that's kind of old news at, at this point. Um, you know, we had a talk last year as well where we announced the iframe embed, which will make use of HTML5 video under some circumstances. But, you know, Greg was uh, and Sultan were going into some Good details about things like CSS effects that they're using for some of the controls within the player, um, things that are a little <coughs> bit more advanced than just video playback. I think they were going into how you could overlay um, text tracks on top of video elements, make use of some of these uh, emerging standards to have a really nice compliant player, and uh, some performance uh, just measurements as well, showing uh, the imp impact of doing different approaches. So uh, that's my <laughs> very abridged summary of their talk. Hopefully that's enough to whet some folks' appetite and go out and watch the video yourself. You know, I go to the player team meetings a lot, and the one thing that amazes me is how closely we follow, uh, we follow the industry. So for instance, we wanted to go full screen with the HTML5 player. And Greg's like, well, you know, I'm watching the Firefox guys and the Chrome guys, and it's going to be launched at such and such a date. And so it's just like we wait for the browsers to have support, and we immediately start using it. It's kind of pretty amazing how cutting edge that team is. <laughs> no comment. <Yeah. laughs> well, I was just going to say that. I'm actually uh, interested to see at which point we'll be able to incorporate HTML5, get um, user media out so that uh, the webcam widget actually works with HTML5. I think yeah. one thing that Jeff uh, didn't mention is that we still uh, require Flash uh, yeah. for the widget. Uh, so it would be nice yeah. to be able to, to kind of address multiple uh, runtime environments. Yeah. Yeah, and that's definitely in Eric, uh, Eric the engineer who, who wrote it. It's in his plans. Yep. So the next talk is uh, a talk that you led, Yarek. Uh YouTube API plus cloud rendering equals happy mobile gamers. Uh, yes, so uh, <coughs> that, that talk is uh, more of a gaming talk. Uh, we did a talk last year about uh, video playback, video uh, uploads from uh, console games. And our guest speaker uh, was Dagmar from Activision. We talked about uh, Call of Duty Black Ops integration that uh, we did with, with uh, Triarch, which is the studio that built Black Ops. And that was cool, but it seems like you went way above and beyond so, this time. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we always try to, uh, you know, to do more. And uh, uh, this year, what we wanted to target is the mobile space. As you know, you guys all know, mobile games are really uh, exploding, and everybody is a mobile gamer. In fact, one of the interesting stats uh, that we shared at the session is that uh, I think in 2014, almost uh, half of the U.S. population is predicted to be playing mobile games. Uh, so that number is actually growing quite nicely. And then internationally, that uh, trend is even stronger. Yeah, that, that trend is definitely pretty strong in my household. I'm always asking my wife if she'll watch me you know, do, do these sessions. And she's like, I'm sorry, I'd rather play some mobile games. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the question then becomes, you know, how do we actually upload videos from these games? Because uh, YouTube gaming community is very strong. People share the gameplay video. Uh, they show off their achievements, and they share uh, tricks and tips. Uh, but uh, in the mobile context, this is a little more difficult. So what we decided to do is really show it at several different approaches to, to this problem, starting with uh, doing the video rendering and encoding right there on the device. Uh, then uh, an approach that we prototyped and we spoke previously at Game Developers Conference, which offloads the entire rendering and, and encoding process into the cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, we were actually running the uh, rendering and encoding 
uh, on top of uh, Google Computer Engine, except that the session was on Wednesday and the Computer Engine launched on Thursday, so we couldn't oh, say uh, this was Computer <laughs> Engine. But now I can say in public that it was Computer Engine, actually. <laughs> I think we have hidden that pretty well. Um, and then, uh, so that was kind of the cloud approach. And then there was another approach that uh, we work on a with a partner on to actually perform the actual uh, rendering in the cloud, but uh, do the capture right there on the device by intercepting OpenGL open calls. Uh, so a couple of different approaches. The part that I'm most excited about is we had a special guest. And again, uh, just like in the previous session, I will not going to uh, blow the surprise, but let me just say uh, it was a member of, of a very famous uh, YouTube uh, 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 partner. Uh, who publishes uh, basketball trick shot videos. Dude, it was perfect. Uh, it was quite perfect. <laughs> and uh, I really encourage you to watch uh, his uh, part of the presentation. The interesting part that he covered is uh, you know, if you are a content owner and you have a subscriber base, you can actually leverage that subscriber base to help propel your mobile game you know, very high on the charts. So their game actually ended up being number one on the App Store and, and, and Google Play uh, after they launched it, uh, largely thanks to a very loyal uh, following of uh, their subscribers. Uh, so that's kind of a scalable, interesting approach. As you know, traditionally people invest in promoting th their games by you know advertising and stuff like that. How about creating some interesting content yeah. and then using your YouTube audience to um, help you promote the game? And it has worked for them. A very interesting presentation. I, I really encourage you to uh, to watch it. Yeah. Step one, go viral. Step three, profit. Rest is easy. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm also really excited by another partner that you had in that talk. You had Summit X Games, the the guys who did Tony Hawk Three. And you know, as soon as I heard about that, I I was telling all my kids, Hey, I'm hanging out with the guys who did Tony Hawk Three. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty awesome. And uh, uh, yes, they are called Free Range Games uh, now. So it's it's a studio based uh, here in Northern California. Uh, very creative, uh, amazing uh, games, and uh, they're sharing uh, their experience uh, incorporating video game play uh, capture into uh, uh, Summit X, and this is something that that we're working on uh, with them. And then also they shared a bunch of experiences, kind of general, you know, mobile design experience. How do you design a mobile game? What are the things to watch out for? Uh, so kind of lesson learned based on their experience. So very interesting part as well. And I hate to keep like pushing you, but this talk was so awesome. Can we talk about the Unity 3D stuff? Yes. So uh, you know what we decided to do is is to take a game engine uh, and try to adapt it to uh, include the video uploads capability. Uh, since it's a more scalable model than you know trying to f uh, ask every game developer to build their own stuff. Uh, so to that end, actually, uh, we work with a partner, uh, Luminary Studios is here, a Bay Area-based uh, company. And they were able to basically build a module that plugs into Unity uh, and uh, performs the video uh, capture and the encoding using uh, WebMVP8 and uh, Oak Vorbis. Uh, so open source uh, technologies. Uh, as far as the media uh, encoding and then uh, Unity engine uh, that uh, is you know quite popular and, and uh, quite scalable for uh, for developers that build uh, mobile games. Uh, so we are still uh, working on kind of finishing polishing that stuff up, uh, and we're going to look into you know how can we make it available for Unity developers. Yeah. And Unity has been a great sponsor, so I just wanted to acknowledge them. Yeah. They helped us uh, a lot along the way uh, with the process. So I think yeah. uh, if we could get game engines to um, include this functionality, then I think uh, mobile gamers will be quite happy because finally you know, I'll be able to share my Do Perfect uh, uh, shots and, and other achievements uh, that I um, achieve instead of working uh, <coughs> on YouTube, which I think that would be pretty awesome. I definitely think in terms of like if there were, was an award for coolest talk with most external partners, with most collaboration with external people, this would this talk would definitely win it. It was pretty impressive. Thank you, JJ. Are you gonna get me coffee? Oh well, yeah, yeah. So the next the next talk we had was um, YouTube channels get with the program, and this was by Drawer Shimshwitz and AJ Crane, and they're um, uh, uh, project managers. No, sorry, product managers. I always get those two confused. And I watched this talk a couple times. It was actually pretty good. It was not a super technical talk. But you know, since I spend so much time working with the YouTube API, I don't actually know m much about the rest of the U YouTube ecosystem, such as how to go viral. 
and they talked a lot about you know how to produce good content, how to use content for your business, how to increase engagement, and so forth. And there was some taxidermy and some nope, and a lot of other interesting things in that talk. Uh, did you guys get a chance to see it, or you uh, guys were probably pretty busy with your own talks? I watched the rehearsal, uh, so you know this is a, a secret. Uh, that I'll share. Uh, we do rehearse these talks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a couple times. Uh, and it was quite interesting, actually. Uh, I felt like uh, some of the content was a little similar to your uh, webinar mm -hmm. that you did, uh, YouTube for Your Business, uh, but they really focused on you know all the different ways in which you can create interesting content and, and how creating content for YouTube is actually different than for kind of traditional uh, media. Um, one of the interesting aspects uh, that they stressed, and you know, I've seen that before as well, is to you know make content, not advertisements. So a lot of the you know YouTube content, and you you gave an example of that. It's actually quite <coughs> fun to watch. Uh, so you may not even know that you're watching an ad, but it, it actually is an ad. It's just the YouTube way of of doing it, which is, has proven uh, very very entertaining and, and quite successful. Uh, so one thing that I think that talk really helps people with and it, it kind of ties back into what we talked earlier is you know if you have a, a business and you're an entrepreneur uh, uh, YouTube is a great way to promote your product uh, yeah. and then you know if you get subscribers they give you uh, tricks about um, tips about how you actually build a subscriber base uh, with your content uh, once you have them they can actually uh, help you uh, uh, be successful with your product so uh, you know, I know uh, all of us here are, are developers, but uh, a lot of people that uh, we interact with are entrepreneurs, uh, and they write code, and they also have to figure out a way to, uh, you know, pay the bills and be successful. So I think uh, considering YouTube to promote the product, it, it's a, it's a good idea. But then again, I'm biased. Yeah. Well, you know, the one thing I, I've noticed being at YouTube for long enough is that the PMs are always the ones with the best videos. It's like I went to that talk. It's not technical, but like. My goodness, like all those videos were hilarious. And it was like instant memes, instantly forwarding those to my wife. I mean, they, they're ads, but they're so good. They're fun for sure. Good stuff. Uh, so the next one was uh, YouTube uh, mobile YouTube API apps for content creators, curators, and consumers. And this was another magic trick that, that you, you pulled, pulled together with you know, 10 billion external partners. Uh, yeah, so actually uh, we had uh, three uh, partners co-presenting and also our uh, product manager in charge of our mobile uh, product offering, Andre, Andre Loronice, uh, flew in uh, from London for this presentation. Uh, so what we were trying to do is really help um, showcase um, APIs that enable content creation, uh, curation, and consumption on YouTube in the mobile context. Uh, we talked about you know, the history and the trends that we see on YouTube with mobile consumption and creation. Uh, Andre also uh, discussed in some detail uh, the mo latest version of our YouTube mobile app with some really exciting uh, capabilities uh, just to kind of show, you know, where, where we're going with the app. And then we had uh, demos uh, from uh, WeVideo, uh, and that company builds uh, really nice uh, creation experiences, both uh, traditional HTML. Uh, based uh, web approach as well as mobile. Uh, we had uh, uh, 955 Dreams uh, and they built uh, Band of the Day, uh, History of Jazz on the way to Woodstock. So a lot of very beautiful apps. Uh, their apps are, uh, they, they, they uh, when I talked to them, they, they mentioned that uh, the category that they're trying to uh, pursue is the uh, coffee table application. So they're just so pretty. Uh, that you know, you can toss away your coffee table book. You can just put the tablet uh, with the app on your coffee table. Uh, and they talked about you know how do you build beautiful uh, consumption experience. And then uh, finally, uh, last but not least, uh, some of you that have been kind of following uh, some of the integrations we've been working on recently, uh, we did uh, launch an integration with Flipboard. Uh, so if you Flipboard fan. Uh, they uh, have been on uh, iOS for quite some time. Recently, they launched an Android app integrated with uh, G Plus as well as uh, YouTube. Uh, so now you can subscribe. Uh, you can uh, follow your uh, favorite uh, YouTube content creators on Flipboard. You can also interact. So you can like videos. You can comment on videos all, with, all within a Flipboard app. So they consumed a bunch of our uh, standard feeds, and they integrated the interactivity uh, into the app as well. So they talked about their experience with the um, API and did a very nice demo on the tablet and the mobile device. So uh, that was a lot of fun. 
uh, like you said, uh, quite a few partners, so it's always tricky uh, to get it all uh, together. But uh, I think it's an interesting session if you were building mobile applications and you're looking for some hints about how to include video and <coughs> some best practices. Uh, really, uh, I think that that session will, will be valuable because uh, the quality of the of the apps that was showcased during the session was quite high. You know, one thing that I really like about this talk is that you would say, here's what I'm talking about, either <coughs> curation, creation, um, or so forth. And then here is an API and how to do it. And then here is this beautiful app that spends half of its time being app of the week at the Apple um, uh, App Store. It was just such a like a compelling experience. And those apps were just beautiful. I mean, it's like, I'm never going to code anything as beautiful as that. Those are just amazing. Keep trying, though, JJ. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. Uh, and then uh, finally, we had a code lab that Jeffrey led called Master the Latest YouTube Data API. Tell us about the latest APIs, you know, the ones fresh out the presses. Yeah, I think the, the APIs are still kind of on the presses being further pressed because uh, we do not have anything uh, publicly ready for folks to try yet. And I know that's been a, a source of frustration for a lot of uh, people out there. So apologies in advance before I go into talking about how cool <laughs> these things are. Um, so yeah, we had a code lab. And this code lab was an introduction to both the new version of the YouTube Data API, uh, which we are version three. calling V3, um, not the most inspired name, but technically accurate. It is our, our third major revision of uh, the, the data API. And this is the first version that is no longer based on the older legacy GData format. So um, GData had a bunch of Atom XML streams and whole, uh, a whole set of infrastructure built up around this. But in the past couple of years in particular, you might have noticed that Google has been migrating to a different type of backend infrastructure for all of our newer APIs. And um, that's the same infrastructure that the new data API is built on. So there's a number of you know very visible changes because of that, but there's a number of very real benefits uh, for developers out there. Uh, being on this new backend API infrastructure means that we have a very rich set of client libraries that are being maintained actively by teams within Google that can be used with um, this new set of APIs and uh, has native support for OAuth 2. Um, as I'm sure everyone is aware, we are strongly encouraging everybody to use OAuth 2 with our even older legacy APIs. Um, with the new API, you have to use OAuth 2. There is no more client login. There's no more auth sub. Uh, this is a good thing if you're not sure why. <laughs> You know, there's, there's a lot of time you can spend talking about OAuth 2, and there's a lot of good resources out there for learning as to why it's important. Um, so that's that's going to be a really big change for developers getting started with um, having to basically rewrite a lot of existing code. And uh, we're kind of taking it a little bit slow uh, with the data API. We gave a preview release at Google I.O. to a very limited set of people. Um, basically, the only folks who are currently whitelisted to use the new API are folks that were in the code lab that have had a chance you know, to sit with us and more or less one-on-one -on -one learn how to use it. Uh, not that it's super difficult or anything like that, but we really do want to have a very small set of developers while we're iterating internally, changing some things around. And as soon as we're ready to publicly release that, we're going to remove the whitelist and everybody's going to be able to use that. So that, that was one of the questions I saw on our Google moderator thread, somebody asking about when they could use uh, these new APIs. So, you know, the, this is Google, we don't really give specific ETAs or anything like that. Um, the answer is soon, sooner rather than later, though. Um, you're not anticipating, you know, many, many months to pass before this is available, let's say. So. Yeah. Uh, the actual con substance of the API, that, that was a, a long-winded way of uh, describing the background. But um, what we rolled out as part of the code lab and what we had people test was some of the new features of the data API. Um, and more interestingly, in terms of new stuff, is a brand new analytics API. It's pretty cool stuff. 
So the docs for both the data API and the analytics API are now live on uh, developers.google.com slash YouTube. So folks who, you know, it, this is kind of like taunting folks who know you can't quite use it yet, but you can read the docs for it. Uh, so you can see what it'll offer. And it's a really, really rich uh, analytics reporting experience. I'm told that it's very much modeled on the Google Analytics uh, API. So if you've done Google Analytics stuff before, the YouTube Analytics API will apparently be very natural. And it gives you a lot more control than what you could do right now using our existing Insight API, which is what the older version of uh, the YouTube Data API offered. Uh, the Insight API was just really the ability to download a zip archive that had a bunch of CSV files. And while you could write code to parse zips and parse CSVs and format all your data around, I don't think anybody really looks forward to writing that kind of code. I think so they do that. Able... No, no judging. You know. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, so you know, using the YouTube Analytics API, it's a real RESTful API. You just set some report definitions in your HTTP request, and you'll get back either some JSON data um, directly in your HTTP response, or if you do want CSV data, you could get that too. Uh, there are lots of ins and outs to you know, properly formatting your request. Um, there's the types of reports that are offered. The Analytics API is also not fully complete yet. Their engineering team is actively adding new features. So this is, kind of falls in the same bucket as the Data API in terms of you know, not being able to use it right now. But sooner rather than later, you should be able to. Yeah, I know that a lot of um, partners have talked to us, uh, you know, really interested about this new Analytics API. And I think it's going to open up a, a, a a large number of ways where we could study study why my videos are not popular, um, but I'm also really excited about this V3 thing because you know traditionally, you know our client libraries haven't always been completely up to date, and when we move to V3, uh, we're going to have really really good client libraries that are not not just going to work for YouTube API, but all a bunch of Google APIs. Um, I think that that's really cool, and it yeah. also. And it also helps me with my ultimate goal. If I could port one of those libraries to Haskell, then I could rule the world. <laughs> In fact, which, which ones were you using at the Code Lab, uh, Jeff? Yeah, so the Code Lab, uh, we focused on Python and JavaScript. And we actually have, as part of the public analytics API docs, uh, more or less an, an adapted version of the JavaScript uh, code lab. So you can see that publicly. Um, we're probably going to also repackage it and turn it into a Google Developers Academy course um, once the API is actually available. So yeah, we're kind of in an interesting mode right now. We're going to have some cool things launching, and we want to make sure there's as much good sample code out there for developers as possible, because you, know, you are going to have to do some rewrites if you have some existing legacy um, YouTube API code. So we want to make that as easy as possible for everyone. Yeah. Well, Google I.O. was a big hit this year. I mean, it was like, you know, big attendance. But more than that, we had a lot of YouTube talks. I don't think we had that many last year. Yeah, I think it was our record to date. So I think if the trend continues, I think by 2015, uh, Google I.O. will be about YouTube entirely. That will be the only topic that we'll cover. We'll have to tell the Android guys about that. <laughs> it's pretty awesome, though. I'm excited about that. Uh, and so, of course, you know, you don't have to just listen to us talk about those talks. You could watch those talks now, and I encourage you to do so. You know, if you want to learn more about any of these specific uh, topics, um, why don't we answer some questions now? What do we got going on in the moderation queue? I think there's one question. I think Jeff. Uh, referred to that one already. It was about um, YouTube uh, API uh, analytics uh, access. So this is the V3 question. Yeah. So again, we're, we're not, there are links that uh, anybody could go to to fill out a form and kind of apply for access to these APIs. Um, it's a little unfortunate that we can't, like, as part of that sign-up process, give you more feedback as to if or when you're going to be approved. Um, basically, the only folks who have really been approved right now are the folks who've been part of the code lab. And as soon as we have something that is a lot more stable, I, I don't think 
we're really at the point where you really can build anything that is not going to break one week later when the next push happens. So it's not like you're missing out too much. Uh, and we're going to open up to as many people as we can once we have something stable that we could do that with. Yeah, so, you know, after Google Audio happened, um, a lot of Googlers, developer advocates, and developer programs engineers tend to just collapse uh, because, you know, it's kind of busy. But Yadik had another idea, and he decided that he and I should fly across the world to London and give a YouTube player API Google TV mobile something hackathon. You want to talk about that? Uh, yes, that was a fi final push, actually. When I was a little younger, I used to run uh, marathons. And this is pretty much how you do it. Like You work really hard, and then, then you work even harder on the last I know. couple of miles. Uh, so uh, yes, we, we did have an interesting event in London. Uh, uh, there was a weekend event uh, on a London uh, campus, uh, which is a really great venue and an awesome resource. Uh, if you are uh, UK based, then I really encourage you to check it out. Uh, um, this is a you know wonderful community building around it. Uh, the person that runs it, uh, Easy, uh, is really you know interesting character, very co committed and passionate about entrepreneurs in general. Uh, so it's a great resource. So we thought about trying it out, and uh, we invited. Uh, a bunch of folks. Uh, we uh, had about 18 applications built uh, by uh, Sunday night. Uh, so really nice uh, set of applications. Uh, quite high quality apps. Uh, and we were quite you know, amazed how quickly people were able to build interesting applications with the Android Player API. And there were you know, different categories. I think we had five winners. Uh, they had some prizes uh, and all the free pizza you can eat. Um, and beer. So uh, I think it was quite a successful event. We hopefully we'll, we'll do more of that, um, and and we got some really good uh, feedback. Uh, some of the interesting applications that I thought uh, were were fun were kind of second screen applications. So mobile plus Google TV, tablet, and Google TV. Uh, we had one um, interesting company that um, was basically a co-founder came to the Friday night kickoff session with an idea about building interesting experience around. Uh, the content that they're going to be producing. So not a developer, but rather a, a, a content owner or somebody who wants to start a network and was able to attract a couple of developers to work on, on the idea. And by Sunday night, they had a working demo of you know, interesting uh, mobile experience and TV experience around the content that they'll be producing. So it really kind of helps uh, with the point that you know, if you're building a content, content and you want to have some additional a value add or you know referrals to your own content, the type of experience you want, uh, you can still do that uh, on by syndicating to YouTube and then building out the experience the way you want it, uh, not the way we want people to consume YouTube content mm -hmm. because you know there's kind of many ways to uh, skin <coughs> the cat. So and then you know because of the value add uh, that people include additional content like you know uh, blog posts or whatnot uh, in the overall experience, uh, it was kind of a great story. So we really like that. Uh, so yeah, lot, that lots of interesting ideas. That was that was a beautiful demo, but you know my favorite was when uh, they had one of the contestants entered an app where it's playing uh, a playlist on a Google TV, and then people could gather around the TV with their Android phones. And let me pull one out. And you, if you don't like the video, you point your like phone kind of at the TV and you tilt it up, and it's like reading the the accelerometer to figure out your tilt. And if you don't like it, you pull back like a slingshot and then let go and it flings a virtual tomato at the screen and it explodes on the screen. And if enough um, tomatoes hit the video, then the video gets taken down and the next one played in the playlist. I mean, that was pretty amazing. There's Android here, there's Google TV, there's like accelerometer type stuff, there's second screen type stuff. That was a pretty amazing demo. It was really fun. And one thing that I that I wanted to mention is uh, we were quite lucky. We were able to get quite a few Googlers uh, to the uh, event and sit there with, with the developers for the whole weekend. Uh, so that was one of the teams that had attracted quite a few Googlers uh, helping out. Uh, really awesome demo. Yeah. That was. Any other apps that you can remember that you particularly liked? Uh, one that was interesting and, and it won an honorable mention was an app that basically teaches you how to do various things on your phone. Oh, yeah. Uh, so this is kind of the missing manual problem, you know, and uh, what they would do is record videos about various uh, phone functions and then build an app around that um, uh, uh, experience. So it's kind of, you know, help, but it's a video help for your phone that comes with your phone. Uh, so they came up with the idea and they pitched it, 
uh, they were able to build a prototype uh, at the at the event, and they will be moving forward with it. So that was, that was a cool little little project. Yeah, that was pretty cool. It amazed me just how many people were doing second string second screen type stuff with Google TV. I think that you know second screen is going to be you know a hot topic. So which one the second, the TV or the mobile? You know, for me, I, I, you know, I think that might be a personal preference. Yeah. Yeah. So anything else? Uh, you know, I thought maybe it might make sense for Jeff to talk a little bit about some of the uh, uh, API uh, additions that we made recently. Uh, I know he's been busy posting to news groups and, and anticipating people's questions about them, as he always does. Uh, so Jeff, what do you think? Any, any updates on the recent launches that people should be aware of? Sure, there, there are a couple of recent changes, uh, one of which is captured in a blog post that went up yesterday. Uh, talking about the new get video loaded fraction method that is now part of the player API. And uh, this is something that supersedes and, and more or less deprecates two other methods that have existed for a while called get video bytes loaded and get video bytes total. Um, pretty much we, what we saw was that the way people would use get video bytes loaded and get video bytes total was just by doing a division by um, getting the total number of bytes in the video and um, dividing that into the number of bytes that are loaded to try to figure out how much of a video has already been buffered. And then they were using that information to display you know, a buffer bar in their own custom playback um, experience. So we kind of removed the need to do that division by having one method that will return that fraction for you automatically. So you know, if you've had 50% of the video that's already been buffered, get video loaded fraction, return 0.5, and you can use that directly from in your application. Uh, this is also nice because there are some scenarios, such as when HTML5 video playback is being used, where we were never able to actually return an accurate count of the number of bytes that were available just due to the way the HTML5 video element worked. So we always had to kind of return this approximation that didn't really make sense as a a byte count anyway. So we're kind of doing away with the pretension that these things are bytes that we're returning, and we're just giving you a fraction that you could use yourself. So we have a standard deprecation policy, and you know, the get video bytes loaded and get video bytes total method are not going away you know, today or anything like that. Um, but do consider them officially deprecated. Try moving on to get video loaded fraction instead. That's great. We also have. I mean, we did not blog about it, but it's just come up at least in the forum once or twice, and I know that Yark's been getting some questions about it too, which is um, one of our standard feeds uh, that we make available as part of the data API. And this is a feed of videos that we refer to as most viewed. So it's like most underscore viewed. Uh, for a while now, we haven't really been populating that with anything meaningful. Um, there are a number of reasons why that's been the case. Is that because, but like, the Tommy bit my finger just can, can never be replaced in terms of number of views? Yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with JJ's explanation. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, the basic the basic thrust of the, this though is that most viewed um, is not going to be updated uh, moving forward, and we're recommending that folks no longer use that. Uh, if you're looking for a feed of videos to use that will, for instance, highlight things that are really popular on YouTube. Um, the aptly named most underscore popular video feed is a great feed to use for that purpose. Um, that's going to continue to be updated, and it's a great way to pull in interesting content into your application if you want to surface you know, the, whatever is trending on YouTube right now. Great. So we recommend folks use that instead. Cool. Well, that was a great session. Thank you very much, Jeffrey, and great, great set of Google I.O. talks. Uh, thanks for joining us here, and we will see. It seems like we're going to move to every week now. We're going to do every week, and then I think uh, Jeff wants to do every day, but we're pushing back right, right now. Because I'm, I'm not sure we're ready for that. Damn it, yeah. and we're doing it live! We'll do it live! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot, guys. Take care. Bye, everybody. Bye.